Greetings, Melvi family. Welcome to the this episode of Melvi Podcast on the Go. I'm your host, Melu Sinjalambi. Today we have something very special. Someone I know the Lord has used in many ways. And I'm blessed and I'm very privileged to actually know him. But before I introduce him, if you're watching this for the first time, you have not subscribed yet, I'm going to ask you right now, just look for that red button, subscribe and like this video and do follow this channel so that you can not, you, you may not miss the rest of the other episodes we're bringing on you. Today, it's the Melvi podcast on the go with Rick, Rick G. Limas. That's a name, my friend. <laughs> Trade name, brand name. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a, um, Rick G. Liamas. Layamas. Yes. Mm. And so Layamas is actually two cards between my mother's surname and my dad's surname. So you just combine those two I combine together. the two of them. Oh, just like Mel V. <laughs> <laughs> I took inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, man. Welcome and thank you so much for making time to be with us. Thanks. Thanks for the invite. You, you are the famous YouTuber now. <laughs> Church reality is it church reality? Church reality check. Yes. So guys, if you have not watched that channel, I've put the link in the description. Check out what Rick is doing. He's putting the preachers and prophets and all these guys on the run for their money. In check. In check. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. So let's talk about Rick, the man, the person, the YouTuber. Who's Rick? Um uneducated. Eyeball. Uh, you can't say that. Let, that's where you start. <laughs> Once you start that, you build it properly. <laughs> Let's start right. in the hum humble space. There. Okay, so okay. uneducated, uh, yeah. but extremely passionate about the gospel. Mm. Um, the When I actually went to, to uh, when I finished high school, uh -huh. failed high school more like. I you like flunked it. Badly. I even made a video where I was showing my marks. <laughs> uh, if, you just, if you just check... My home, uh, the only class I did well was like LO. I mean, like I got like 60 there. Oh, and that wow. was a celebration one. And so I was not that good. You in even school. failed your mother tongue language. Yeah, it was like 40 or something oh, like that. Lord. I barely just made it over <laughs> the board. But I was like, yes. <laughs> so it was not that good there. Yeah. But um, towards uh, the 2010s, 11s, when I'm now going towards college and so forth, mm. I could see. Uh, so and that's when I figured, why is it when I read the Bible, it sticks? You're kidding me. It sticks like I would not forget. I would not wow. forget. I would go to prayer meetings and would remember he said this about this verse and he interpreted it like this. Wow. And it was that, of that I don't know if I can call it an obsession, that made me... Um, to stop watching TV. I didn't stop watching TV like, okay, it's evil. No. Yeah. I was like, hey, if I focus on this thing, I can really, because I'm a lazy reader. So my failing school was not because, you know, I was just a lazy reader. Okay. <laughs> and so I figured, since I don't like, I'm not good at reading, if I attend as many services as possible, yeah. I can know the Bible very quickly. Wow. And so uh, that's where the passion, I was like, no, the Bible sticks. Yeah. But school is not sticking. So wow. I told my mom, I made an excuse to my mom, actually. <laughs> I said, you see, you're working at the restaurant. You can't afford to take me and yeah. the two sisters to college. Uh -huh. They are passing. They're doing well. Take Let them, them to. go. I'm the guy. I can hustle my way. You're kidding. And so that's how. So let's go back. Yeah. Let's, the uneducated one. We had that one. The, the Bible mogul, as mm -hmm. I can use that, because you were natural. But let's go back. Ricky was born, was raised. Where, where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I'm an Elam boy. I was born in Elam Hospital. All right. And um, I grew up in Limpopo. I'm the classic village. When you say village kid, uh -huh. I am that kid. So you actually walked barefooted? Uh, not barefooted. Hey, we were, Or no we, shirt on top. Just my just my auntie <laughs> was a teacher, so we were privileged <laughs> enough to have a TV. <laughs> In the early nineties, all right. And so I black and white or color? No, the color ones. Oh, when they nice. were those big. So you were really privileged. Yeah, we're, so when the first mobiles, what's what's this uh, Motorola? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. the, the long one with the, the long, long, long area. We had that. Oh wow! And so you know if if you know that phone, then you were privileged. <laughs> you you were yeah. privileged. Yeah. And so I was raised in a family like that. My auntie, my granny, those people. 
did the most to helping my thing. I never, I'm one of those kids that I grew up in a position where I never felt the absence of my father. Oh, wow. And so like when I see people, don't be offended. When I yeah. see a person who's like obsessing about finding my, I never had that. He was there. He wasn't there. He wasn't. He wasn't there. I, I mean, like I was close to everybody uh -huh. in the in the family. I was close to my your granny, aunties, your uncles, but your... not him. Where was he? I was in Joe back, oh, living yeah. the life. You know, those early days when they say we call her. Yes. When he called her, was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I was raised by people by women who their presence was enough. I just never felt the absence of wow. a father. I only heard about the absence of a father when I came to the city. Mm. Uh, oh, okay, that's a thing. Mm. So it was completely a thing. So raised in the village, classic mm. village boy. Let me describe how yeah, village yeah. Yes. I was. Uh -huh. Come back from school. Uh, the first thing we did, uh, you were writing homework, doing some schoolwork. If you're not doing that, yeah. you're going to the granny's farm mm. to monitor the monkeys from eating all oh, the grain, and the, the grain seed. and the seeds and the whatnot. And this thing is huge. You spend the entire day just busy crossing, Roaming. making some sounds and noises. Yeah, making <laughs> sounds and you hear ch -ch 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 on the other side. You yeah. run to the top of the hill, you know. And so that was oh, classic. Wow. How uh, how. I and maybe up. one once in a while you have some cattle or some goat. Yeah, no, no, we didn't have we didn't oh, have right. animals, uh, okay. but we were so occupied with Granny's farm. Uh huh. Uh, you would come back late, like seven o'clock. Wow. And on Saturdays, God forbid, there yeah. is a funeral, uh -huh. or there is Koro, you know Koro, the, 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 uh, this meeting village meeting. Yes, yes. And yes. the Granny has to go there. Uh -huh. Because that's too bad for you. Because five oh. o'clock, you are the one who's going to the <laughs> to the farm, <laughs> oh, so that wow. you can look at yeah, things before the sun rises. Yeah, you get okay. there. First thing you look, you monitor this. The you monitor the parameter. Yeah, which trap was triggered? Yeah. What kind of an animal got through there? Mm. How do we prevent what not all this? And we had this metal thing. Yeah, man, it was it's a full time thing. Yes. Yeah, there was this small little metal things when they shine. Uh -huh. They would repel some animals. Right. So, so sometimes when they when they there was a mill next to where we used to stay, yeah, we'd go fetch those things, replace them, put them there. It was a full time thing. Wow. Yeah. So you did this until what age? I did this all the way until grade grade seven. Mm. Yeah. But I, if I was uh, back at home, again yeah. another thing. Yeah. Uh, my family was not religious. Okay. Yeah. So So there was no church functions. There was no church on a weekend. No, it's not, not we are praying, no. Mm. So what that. what what kind of faith was in the family? Was it traditional African belief? Nah. So there was absolutely nothing. nothing. The absolute, you my, just lie down like a log and you wake up like a log. No <laughs> prayer, like no, log, no log, nothing. We and my granny only became religious after we had gone. You know, okay. but in childhood we were not religious, uh, and the kids, yeah, we became religious because we went to Roman Catholic schools. All right, I was going to ask where does religion <laughs> come in in your life now? Yeah, because if it's not at home, where did you, where find did you it? get it? Yeah, and who brought it? We we actually got it uh, straight in primary, uh, because in Roman in Catholic school. Mm -hmm. Although the uh, Pan African is, they like making it look bad. Like, oh, they were they indoctrinating us? No, they were giving us moral grounds by which to think of the world. Yeah, you don't like it, it's fine. Yeah, but it gave us a moral ground. Mm. Okay, you had a value for another person from how you you perceive yeah. things. I mean, yeah. like Bible study was a course was was part mm. of our thing. And so, Friday and another thing with with Catholic schools, which yeah. I love, but I don't like the doctrine, but I love what they did here. Mm -hmm. Every single Fridays, yeah, they made it a thing for them to. We we went to to service. There was it's a thirty like minute service. Yeah, you are, you are coming in there. Friday, you are in. Yeah, the first thing you do. Yeah, is we're going to to service. Wow. And if you are Catholic, now this is where the privilege comes in. Yeah. If you are Catholic, uh -huh. you partook in the communion on certain Sunday, on oh. certain Fridays. You're like, mm, okay, I must, I must join in. So you, you feel you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. <laughs> you're from hell. You're going to hell because you're not taking. <laughs> no, no, no. I need to partake. Other kids are, are really thinking. And so 
it built so, values. So, so you get introduced to faith at a Roman Catholic school. Did yeah. your faith get awakened there, or you just went through because this is just school? There was another aspect of the Catholic school part uh -huh. is that we are not really going to church here because yeah. we're not in boarding school, right? Okay. And so when you go back, who are the day scholars? Mm -hmm. When we go back home, we're like, you know, might as well go Join to, them a, on to the a weekend. local to a local right. Catholic church, uh -huh. and we attended that. And then there they had something called Masolenyana. All right. It's a small little thing. If you Google it on 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 Google and you mm -hmm. say Roman Catholic Masolenyana, mm -hmm. they were kids. They were known kids of the faith. Like okay. soldiers for Christ kind All of right. thing. Yeah, and those the thing that I like about that was they made they made us watch each other. Okay. If you were spotted jolling, uh huh, they will report. We we'll bring it to 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 the oh to the master to the master to, to the priest. Oh no, this one stole. <laughs> oh wow! And so it kept us on the look. On a moral check. Yeah, I mean, like so, my entire primary, I never had a girlfriend. Wow. My entire primary school because uh -huh. you know Why? were you trying to be a priest now? no you were not allowed <laughs> oh is that so yeah we were not allowed to do it and which was a good thing though the girls were around yeah the girls would be there they might even acknowledge you but you're not allowed to do you're not thing. allowed to do if you do it you'll be punished and also <gasps> there was a little bit of a small little thing and i might take out you know yeah you might be fine i can't remember what it was if it was 150 or whatnot so you can't uh -huh. lose your 150 now oh my <laughs> oh, you have to defend it <laughs> <laughs> and so we we stepped. That was a very good thing. So 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 did this shape the rig that we see today, or your life proceeded on to something? Actually, else that today? exposed me to the wrong thing, mm. because How the so? doctrine there, it's good, it's great because it gave me moral grounds to say right, wrong. Mm. But it exposed me to false doctrine because the Catholic Church doesn't teach. But at that time, you didn't know it's false. Yeah. To you, it's something new. It's great. It's you awesome. love the environment. Yeah. Homely, caring. There's this nice service. You need to eat that white bread, and I'm part know, of that. Morals are being driven, and you're being told to be nice. Don't be naughty <laughs> with girls. So at that at that stage, you're happy. You're discovering this. Yeah. So at what point in your journey then, or in your life, from a faith point of view, yeah, did you take a switch and you begin to see things, and your eyes were open to this? This is where a lot of people might not be aware. There's a video on the channel about mm -hmm. it. But because of the way Catholic doctrine is structured mm. or what it puts forward, the Marys, the whatnots and whatnot, mm. because it it it, uh, it favors those things, it created a danger because one of my uncles was Muslim. Mm -hmm. Oh. So now okay. I come to, 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 to Gauteng and finally, hey, uncle, you see him and he's like, oh, I know, I'm Catholic. <laughs> oh, he's wow. like, Catholic doctrine, it's false. And so it exposed me to Islam. First. Yes. Because mm. when I came to, to think, I never went to a Catholic church because it looked like I used to stay in Hillbro. So All right. where, where, which Catholic church are you going to go to there? Yeah. And so, and it looked like too much. I'd never had that confrontation of going to a new church mm -hmm. before. I never had to deal with that. So All right. there was a difficulty there. And so my uncle, I meet my uncle is from Pretoria and he, he introduces me to the aspect of doctrine. And he's like, you guys teach praying to Mary. And I can't deny that. Because you've seen we do. it. Yeah. And you even do the prayers and the your prayer, the rosary yes. beads and whatnot yeah. in the 10 times to our father, 10 times this. He's like, mm. what is that all about? So he he takes the direct doctrine of the Catholic and he says, you should become Muslim. Oh, wow. And so that's the interest now starts to shift. Mm -hmm. And I start building this interest towards Islam. And now that does something for me. Okay. Because that made me uh, now say, oh, I got a God here. All right. Because it made me realize if you don't know your stuff. Then you're lost. You're lost. You could be anything to anyone. The only problem was what? I didn't have a reference point. So you don't even know the Bible. You've not even yeah. read it. If I knew the Bible, I would have said, oh no, Catholic doctrine is wrong. Uh -huh. But I didn't have that. But that was the transition of how it comes to faith. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. So you come to Houteng. Mm. This is it, the parents' move or it was your own move? Uh, they wanted us to have better 
uh, space of education just All to right. grow in a different in an urban area exposed yeah. to opportunities and the economy yeah. and so they, they thought everybody all the kids when they go to high school go to Houting. All right. Yeah. So you find yourself in Houting. Yeah. You were in school. And uh, at what point in your journey mm. in school? In fact, uh, before I even get to that, mm. you talked earlier on about you flanking those grades. <laughs> <laughs> what are the lessons you learned from there because you no longer look like a failure <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know <laughs> you don't look like where you come from <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't see the failure it's written in the mind it's at the back of them yeah um the funny thing is i i can absorb but to retain that information my the mind just stuff doesn't and the theories yeah, and all those formulas just and doesn't go through it mm. just doesn't go through and so but through high school i was fine mm. i only failed a grade three okay yeah throughout my entire high school and secondary yeah i only failed grade, grade three and ever since then never failed until metric now metric will challenge you and i think it's also the panic that also comes yeah, in the pressure it's yeah. a bridge you have to cross and how did i respond to that to that how did i respond to that mm-hmm. thing I just didn't care. Cuz really? they had put so much pressure on me. Yeah. It felt like ah, that's their life. We were partying. Oh wow. My metric, but that's metric, that's later on. Yes. And so cuz metric has its own thing that leads to me becoming saved. And so mm. um you come when I came into to Joburg they gave me a two rands. This was Ricky now coming into responsibility now. All In right. the city nobody's going to be watching you. All right. So I walked with a small note with everybody's number. My mom, my auntie, <laughs> my wow. my uncle and This is Josie now. This is Josie now. Things can happen here. In It's the ta- no longer the village. <laughs> <laughs> In the time of cell phone booths. Yes. Okay? So when when going to a small little phone booth was yeah, a thing. You Nowadays. Can dial there. So I walked with the two runs with everybody's number and there was a time slot for everything. Wow. Okay. If you get lost at two o'clock, your uncle will be done at school. So you can mm. call him. If you if you get lost at four o'clock, your cousin, <laughs> your older cousin will It's be done. At work. Yeah. If you get lost after five, you call your mom. Wow. So uh, they walked me to school. I remember they walked me uh, once. Mm-hmm. They walked me the simplest route from Beria yes all the way straight Pretoria street mm. cross you get to um what is the street um the one way the taxis go up towards Pretoria uh-huh. that street we go all the way down Foo. down when you get to MTN MTN rank Tower, yeah. jump the MTN rank 10 right all the way to park station there is the school there is a school there was a school there called Vine College Wow. Mm. It was right at that big building where which mm-hmm. is right next to Carlton Center. So mm-hmm. which is right next to Park Station. So that's how I get used to the city now. Wow. So when I'm learning I now take two streets ahead. Well, yeah. Cross, Then the cross, other one just so that I can map. know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think I ate that two two runs in like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> It took me two weeks to earn my reward. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, and so those were the early um uh, days. Now you come into Your metric years. Y- yeah, b- before you get there, bullies. Yeah. In the bullies that you have in Chosy now. You have kids that have gone through things. You are new here. You're just coming from Limpopo. And so now you have the threats. You are now exposed to threats. Mm. And so how you deal with these threats translates to what you become in, yeah. in your adult years. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, the funniest thing was when, when I walked into school, the first child that I saw, mm-hmm. I asked him, "Hey, I'm looking for grade what 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 what." And he happened to be the his father was the director of the school. All right. So I when I walked into the school, yeah. I happened to just meet somebody who was at the right at a, model. At the right model for me not to get bullied. All right. So, <laughs> you can make friends with the right <laughs> with kid. At the right kid. And through my my thing, I never had that issue because I was friends with them. But then you're living in this environment where there are all these threats outside. Now that's now outside. This mm. is where now you know you, you start wanting to get used to the kids at the game shops when game shops were thing yeah. early 2000s yeah. and so yeah. forth because you know 
once you know this game kids in this game shop you know kids in this game shop mm-hmm. when you're walking in between these blocks nobody can rob because they've introduced they you, you. Yeah. yeah and so I, i got into that a little bit because um to be safe yes so make would, friends to be safe yeah oh yeah oh Oh no 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 yeah. wow. so I never got robbed wow in in thing yeah. now if my mom watches this she'd be like what you were making friends with people just for <laughs> yeah people were getting robbed out there <laughs> and so yeah I never got robbed through mm-hmm. the time when I was in thing because mm-hmm. you know these kids and again another thing with game shops back then yeah all the gangsters used to come to the game shops and bait and play on the games yeah and so right. the older kids who knew them Uh, you hanging with with kids who are brothers oh this is my brother oh, oh okay oh, and he's the biggest bully in he's the, the biggest bully the gangster in, the, in the neighborhood yeah and so you got your free pass wow so we but this this brings us to towards the late years of me being lazy to school work but Matrix besides years. lazy to school work ricky how do you survive the drugs in that environment yeah no that that was not that was not thingy we used to frown but, on it By then it wasn't a, a big peer pressure point. The group that I was with mm-hmm. when you started that we were on your neck. Oh. Yeah. There were kids that were getting into like smash and grab and what mm-hmm. what 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 what. Mm-hmm. And who'd go there and say what 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 are you doing? Are you what crazy? What is this about? What yeah. Are, yeah, and I mean like we are ga- we are we are again. Mhm. Okay. Now these are the kids at home, not the ones in school. The ones in school Yeah. director school what 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 fine yeah the nice yeah. good boys at school but when we go back home you're going the, to your clusters of groups yeah these kids were they were very rough kids some of them they had to be taken back to the village just to, mm. to save them how dangerous i remember one day there was a fight mm. and um funny one this kid decides to piss off mm-hmm one of the kids inside there he took oh. takes his two rand he plays a game with it the kid comes back shouting claps him when he claps him he goes out can't the kid is a, his brother is a taxi driver oh lord and now we get a call hey they Things say this guy just down. they say this guy just left the taxi rank he's coming he's coming up i don't know what you guys did now i'm like hey this guy's put me in trouble i'm not even Now I didn't even do nothing to this kid. And so we stand outside and we were at Flamingo. It was called Flamingo uh-huh. on Pretoria Street. Uh-huh. And Flamingo is structured in a way that you could stand right on the peak. Yeah. And you could look down on where everybody else is, is coming from, yeah. And so I'm waiting and I'm waiting. I'm like, "Oh man, I hope this guy doesn't show up." And these guys are pumped and I'm like, "How are they so excited at fight? <laughs> we are a group, we are safe." Yeah. In our group. And then it it hit eight o'clock. I'm like, hi guys, me, I'm going. I'm yeah. like, oh thank God. I just went out. Uh, they say he came like five minutes late, late. And the fight that came from that yeah. sent all those kids back home. Oh my lord! You just had moved five minutes. Yeah, five minutes after I left, home. I said, ah, I'm, it's eight o'clock, guys. Me, I'm going home. Oh wow! And I got, I went back home the next day. Uh, one of the kids was called Melvin. He was sent home, and he was the 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 leader in the group and stuff oh, like wow. that and yeah and so that was the safe thing but that showed me you got to guard yourself but mm-hmm. the extremes mm-hmm. won't help things could go wrong at any time at any time yeah yeah so school metric you flunk this thing you don't get the right grades i was in the worst place by that time um when i when i got to metric mm-hmm. i was so not focused Mm. Completely. What's what's t- what's taking your attention away from books? You are a teenager now. You you should be mature. Mm. You're getting taller. Your voice is deeper. You're getting the <laughs> looks. You you're the man here. Mm. What gets? Where do you drop the ball? And what happens there? Um, it starts to. It starts when I'm in grade nine. All right. I have a girlfriend, my first girlfriend by the name of Mtlat. Oh. An amazing person. I'm saying her name because yeah. Thing outside of that I wouldn't say her name. Her name was Mtlat. She was a Christian. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like she had when when I met her there was a bit of structure to my life. All right. Yeah. And then when I went to as grade 11, she left the school. Oh, and took your heart away. <laughs> <laughs> so when she when she left the school, the boy became reckless. 
my love is gone. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the boy became And the like, two rand is not enough to call. The like. two rand can call now, you know? So it can't cut it. Two rand, since two rand can cut it. Uh, yeah, when she left the school, there was that, because school comes out at three o'clock. Yeah. From three o'clock up until five. Me and her used to just sit at the taxi rank. They knew us. Wow. They knew us at the taxi rank, mm. which is just sit at the corner and what, 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 until late. And wow. she takes a taxi, I walk back home. Mm. And so there was a bit of structure around my life when she was there. Right. But when she left, when I was in grade, grade 11, yeah. I now have new friends who I hang with after school now. Now, these ones, mm -hmm. their brothers were into club life. All right. And so one day, one of them is doing a party. Oh, you should come. Oh, yeah, 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 moms. I'm going to my friend's house. Uh -huh. There's a party. I didn't tell her that part. All right. Sleeping over. Great stuff. We get there. They say, hey, the party is moving to the club. We're going to Rocky wow. Street, Yoville. Wow. The other side of Jobek. Yeah. Now, that's, that's now the crazier part. <laughs> Rocky was wild. All if right. there was ever a street that was more destructive, uh -huh. Rocky must be responsible for, for like the youth of Zimbabwe's destruction. Mm. If you wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm, I kid you not, if you wanted yeah. to blame yeah. anybody for the youth for of the Zimbabwe, Yovel. They all were streaming right in there. They were the people I was partying with. Oh, wow. We got there, I remember, and we were young. We're not even supposed to be in the club. Mm -hmm. But because they knew everybody, they knew the, 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 the securities, the we just got in. We had the base. Oh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. The base is boring. We go oh, to this wow. one. We jump, we jump, we jump, we jump. And we got into that life. We didn't, we're not there for drinking. We mm -hmm. didn't drink. Just for the music, the fun, the we dance. We loved dancing. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, and the funny part was me and this guy, his name was Jones, second name Gift. So me and him had the same name. Wow. <laughs> and so people, you wouldn't tear us apart. We were always <laughs> like this. And so we'd go there, party, go there, party, to a point where his brother one day got so tired got so tired of us, uh -huh. he waited for us and just watched us. We were there at another party later on. In yeah. the, and he clapped us. Oh, Lord. <laughs> What are you doing here? I'm Suk. Yeah. He's eating, he's not eating us for that day. Uh -huh. He's eating us for all the shenanigans oh. we've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk it later. Because we were becoming so reckless. We would walk eight o'clock. Oh, wow. God forbid we are coming from school. We hear our favorite song. Oh, Lord. Summer Rain. It was a song uh -huh. called Summer, Summer Rain, Rain. Yeah. by Bojo Mujo. Uh -huh. If we hear Summer Rain, even if it's Everything Thursday, drops. we are going. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is also oh added to the failing of metric yeah so you play at school you fail yeah now walk us through how god walked into your life what happened for you to discover this faith grade 12 so grade mm -hmm. 12 is kind of a very big deal yeah to in South Africa to, is. Yeah. yeah apart from South Africa. Metric, yeah, for me for coming you. to say to faith all right uh we in school um and there's a kid that used to hang out around us we used to rap we went to freestyle mm -hmm. battle rap so mm -hmm. this this combat did you have a rap name a yeah, stage name trigger trigger <laughs> <laughs> you're pulling it <laughs> i used to pull the trigger <laughs> and so i was into we were into battle rap yeah. And so, and you know, better. If you, you're a smart guy. You yes. have to have it just the has to come. Must just come. Yes. Yeah. And so we went to better rap. And um, there was this kid that used to just hang around us. He wasn't a rapper or anything. Mm. I'm sorry to say his name. His name was Tsaone. Tsaone. Yeah. All right. Now, he used to just hang around us. All the time he was there. Hey, I'm a rapper. What, uh, what's up? Now, something happened with Saone during the period around June mm. of 2008. Mm. And he started saying that he was hearing the voice of his father calling him. Oh, wow. Now, but during that period, my interest is Islam, bear in mind. All right. Your uncle is influencing yeah, you. Yeah, the influence is already sunk in. Now I'm now starting yeah. to read the modules. I'm reading what. Oh, wow. 
I'm researching the Quran and all those things. Yeah. But I have no access to the internet, of course. Yeah, those days the internet was a bit of a challenge. But you have to go to the cafe. So that created yeah. a stumbling block there. But eventually we got we got across. But the one thing was, this kid, he starts saying that he's hearing the, vo the voice of his father. And mm. unfortunately, which is the thing with a lot of black, black parents, they dismissed it. Okay. Yeah, they dismissed it. They try to get him focused on other things. But no, this thing is eating at this kid. Wow. And it's eating at him so much that in the period of us going to the holidays, to coming back to the holidays, mm -hmm. he committed suicide. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he, 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 he takes his life. Yeah. And so he had a friend by the name of Mandla. They used to stay in the same building. Mm. He's pissed off. He's angry. The family yeah. is, is not having it. He manages to get out. Manda goes and fetches him. Hey man, come down. He mm. calms him down. Mm. When he comes down, the family fetches him. Okay. When the family fetches him, say, hey, you're not going to be like that. They bring him back. Mm. Whatever happened, they argued with him or whatever. Mm. He went to sleep. He decided when they go to sleep, he's going to jump the thing. building and he's going to. So, Jeez. I'm in Pretoria. You know, I just received some new modules from my uncle. Yeah. I'm reading these things. And then I get a call from my friend Sigma. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, this Saone is... is no more. Oh, no. So now this brings back, hey, life is short. Wow. Now, this takes me back. The part, the, the point of life is short. Mm -hmm. My mom, every single time when we're doing this up and down. Yeah. Going late at night, walking home, coming in home at eight o'clock. I didn't do that. Those type of things. Yeah. Um. My mom would constantly say, "I I had a dream. It mm. doesn't look pretty." Mm. And so, if you continue with that lifestyle that you are in into, it mm. wasn't my mom being nice. Oh, you know, uh, uh. My mom just told me what it is. Just like it is. Straight. You don't like it. It's your problem. Wow. She says if you don't stop this, you end up dead. Oh wow. She left it like that. And here is your friend now. So my when my friend passes, those words they, they, they click. Up. And then So they were like a trigger, your name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they beat the one who was singing it. <laughs> yes, another and trigger was pulled. <laughs> was pulled and it was pulled back at me. And yeah. that then when we go back to school, there are some people that heard about his passing. They decided to come and evangelize at the school. Oh. So they were talking. And for some reason, I wanted to listen. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't hear them. Mm. Absolutely nothing. My you mean literally? Yeah. Or the environment was just too loud? We were so playful. Mm. You know, we were so used to being playful. And rowdy. Just the rowdy, noisy crowd. So I had absolutely nothing. Mm. And it bothered me later to say, what exactly were they saying? What were they saying? I know that they were talking about church and God and what, life being short and all this. And our school was very wild. Vine mm. College was very wild. It was known to be one of the craziest schools because mm. kids were uh, who were doing uh, train surfing. You remember train surfing was yes, a big deal. riding on top of the trains. Yeah. Dodging those lines and the Some of the bridges. kids were losing their legs. Some the, uh, you know, sometimes when I'm working in town, I meet some of those kids who were oh. in my school who lost their legs because they were having fun. It was fun and games, mm -hmm. but they lost something that they couldn't. Mm. So they lost their legs. Whatnot. So the school was very... Rowdy. So all this sense, it happens in June. I fail my trick. <laughs> End of the year. Yeah, and then everybody now can go and fill up their applications. They go to whatever school. Now the reality sets in. You're an adult. You are now you on failed your me own. trick. You're on your own. There's no such a thing. It's a fr friends are scam. I was convinced <laughs> then. Friends are a scam. scam yeah. This thing is a lie. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because by then time, I I I don't want to lie to you. Leadership. I there was no one. You are alone now. No one. Wow. At this point, where's your dad? My biological dad. Mm -hmm. My biological dad had, I'd never, I'd never, never stayed him. with him. I knew him. Mm -hmm. We used to go visit his house. But he's, all, he's one of those people that are just too into their friends. 
Okay. And so he he doesn't see how it affects. He continued being absent. Yeah, he continued, but he will call you once in a while. Mm. Hey, how are you? You know what 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 what. All right. Yeah, but there was something that actually happened later on. Um, my mom. Another thing which I really love. My mom never poisoned mm. me against him. Mm. She never poisoned me against him. She said, "I would rather you see him yourself." All right. Okay. So if there's anything that your dad is like, yeah. You see it yourself, but I will wow. never tell you anything. But every time I went to his family, mm-hmm. they were they were, they were talking this and that and that. Your man, your father, this. So, so it's a, so All he right. was that type of a person. So you are alone here. You are. How did God come into your life? I want us to I go got to the board. Board. Yeah. By yourself, <laughs> the trigger is no longer <laughs> He's no longer triggering anything. <laughs> I got bored. And so, Angeri, when you are rewriting the trick, yeah. so you got the six months. What are yes. you doing in six months? If you are me, you don't. You're not into reading. You're not into being by yourself. You're not into. What are you doing? Oh man! So, uh, every, and everybody's in school. Who, who are you? Who do you want? And, and those you were playing with, some of them are now in college. They're and they're yeah. talking about what their plans for the future, yeah. career, what 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 oh, what. This course, this module, this what, this what. So, nobody's there. So I got bored and everybody used to invite me to church. My mom used to invite me to church. So I visited my mom's church. Yeah. There was a bishop there. He was one of the junior pastors. Bit arrogant. I was like, hey, I'm not doing this. He asked me some silly questions. I said, I'm just coming to the church for the You're first time. You're coming from the world. You are a sinner. Come on. <sighs> Bow. <laughs> so I said, no, no, no. He asked me where a certain book in the Bible was. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just coming. And you're asking me questions like that. So, oh. yeah, he, he did something that was like, I just like. You, he made you look foolish. Yeah. You don't know the Bible. And what are you doing here? So I'm wow. like, okay. So I'm like, no, you know what? Wow. The problem was I went to a small church. Okay. That was my answer to All me. All right. Let me go to yeah. a bigger church. Yeah. And so I look for a church. There was a church called Mount Calvary. Mm-hmm. And I just visited on a Sunday and I got their schedule. I looked at their schedule. So they had a service almost every day. They had a prayer in the morning mm. and what. I'm like, okay. I'll mm-hmm. go there. Mm-hmm. I'll be there. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I started going to, to church. Okay. From that around... February, um, January, February, and yes. so forth. Yeah. yeah, and I think I was there for two months before mm. I was saved. Mm. Yeah, I remember the message like. So finally, uh huh, like the back of my hand. What was the message? The man was preaching about the woman who was known in the seat as a sinner. All right. Yeah. So, and he says that this woman, they didn't know her name. You, we still know your name. So you're not wow. so bad. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you won me over. <laughs> wow. so I'm not that bad. Okay. You could identify. <laughs> I could I'm identify. I'm not that okay, bad. I'm after not that all. bad. This woman was known as a sinner. No ways, man. I, I yeah, can I can I'm better off. Yeah, and it was a midweek service. It was a, on a Thursday. Mm. They had a conference. They used to do something called Bless Africa, something like that, or something like that. All right. Yeah. And so they had this service on a Thursday. Mm. There was like twenty people there on mm. that day. It's a two thousand church C-tech. but wow during the week it's small and there were like 20 people wow and i walked up i was like yeah okay man, man man's saved now so you receive christ yeah and then how does the lord lead you from that point onwards the church had bible studies and so these bible studies they used to do them on mondays and when on a thursday i think Mm-hmm. And so these Bible studies were studies that kind of prepared you for baptism. Okay. And so I started attending those uh, those ones. And mm. also the thing that drew me to those things was there was a, a man who used to do the announcements. Mm-hmm. His name was White. Uh, his mm-hmm. son's name was White. Mm-hmm. Clay. Mm. I'd never had excellence like at that level. Mm. The man is supposed to be doing announcements. Mm-hmm. But he puts a verse here, squeezes a verse here, and I'm like, this, this is excellent. Knows. He knows his stuff. <laughs> he knows his stuff. And remember my code? Yeah. I'm trying to attend as many services yes. so that I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to get with this man. Yeah. And so yeah. I heard that he does one of the classes. All right. So, so I'm yeah. like, okay, so if I'm going to be 
I need to attend his class. All right. I go to look for his class. They say, no, his class, you can only attend it after taking the beginner class for six months. And I'm All like, right. I gotta go to another class, okay? <laughs> Fine. And finally, I did uh, go uh-huh. and there was this entire thing around him and studying the Bible. It was such a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how the burning came in. Mm-hmm. And so they had these Bible studies and we would talk about different doctrines. Oh, this teaching and with this teaching. And mm. this is where church reality comes from. All right. Is that. So all this exegesis and all this uh, teaching is awakened in that class. It's awakened in that class. But why? This is what's interesting. It's why was it awakened in that class? Uh-huh. The class was teaching us those people's doctrines. Okay. And my issue was, why are we talking about their doctrine them. and we're not talking to them? Mm-hmm. We need to talk to them about that doctrine. Yes. So All right. it was me. Uh, can't, I think that's how you find yourself. In. <laughs> I, I see. Now, now I see. Now I see. That's why you're taking this thing back to them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, wait a minute, why are we discussing it? All right. And uh, it became an obsession. Yeah. Yeah. I started now researching more and whatnot and what, what, wow. what, and looking. So we would learn something in the, in the class. Yeah. What he teaches. I'll go back, look at it, look for more reference, uh-huh. create a small little clip, and I'm like, I'm going to start evangelizing in schools. Wow. So I started sending letters to schools, which would allow me to okay. come wow. and evangelize to their kids and so forth. And um, I'd registered to do carpentry because uh-huh. Jesus was a carpenter after all. <laughs> so. okay. Some of, us take, some of us take <laughs> after the master, guys. It's okay. <laughs> and so, yeah. but when I was doing that, because I realized I didn't fit. Mm. The, so I'm here, I'm doing it. I like it. Mm-hmm. I can see that I have the capability of actually understanding this thing. Okay. For the first time ever, I yeah. was like, oh, I think I can understand this thing. I, All right. I can actually grasp it. Because mm. remember, I failed matric. Mm. So yeah. in these colleges, what, what you do actually leads to you almost having your matric thing. All right. So when I, was, <laughs> when I was in these classes, I would be thinking about going to evangelize. Oh, wow. So now I was like, you know what? It would be great if I could find something to do business-wise that would allow me to do this. So now we're translating what I was having when I was in the class, mm-hmm. and it goes back into the field. Oh wow! So that's how church, uh, church reality comes. So, from. so, so it was the year then was two thousand and um, I can't remember the year. Mm. Dead men arise. Mm. Twenty nineteen. No, it's before that. I think it's twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. It's nineteen because that's the year I lost the channel. I remember it very. Oh, well. is that so? Yes. <laughs> so, boom! One of these guys sends out a miracle. Yeah. Yeah, he has woken up a dead man, and it's trending. My spirit gets steered up, and I'm like, "No way, <laughs> something must be done." So I go online and I'm searching, and here comes your clip. Mm. I click on this thing and I listen to you, and I'm like, "Hello, brother, <laughs> you're laying it here. <laughs> something is happening." I can hear that you've got sound doctrine. You're laying this thing so clearly. Mm. And you're contesting the point of faith. Mm. So so this is apologetics oh, 101. Mm. And I'm like, who's this guy? Mm. So I go on and I look for your number. Mm. I get the number. I call you. Mm. At this point, I don't even know whether you belong to my denomination or not. Yeah. I just heard what I heard and I like what I heard. And there's something I need to put together. Mm. And while I'm calling a few people around, mm. I'm putting people together. Uh, I, I call this other brother, Makado, mm. uh, you know, the, 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 the apostle. Mm. And I'm like, you've written a book, okay, on the church mafia. Yeah. Uh, Solomon, you're the critic. You've done this and this, Maponga. Mm. And Bring then, this. Ricky, mm. you were there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I want is to really just lay out mm. what is the truth about this thing we are hearing? 
Yeah. And so by that time, I find you ready. Yeah. You're onto this thing. You come onto the stage. Mm. You do your thing as Ricky. Mm. All right, back then. And that's how Melvi meets Actually Ricky. met Ricky. Mm. But then soon after that, you were in trouble with YouTube. Yeah. Which which was very unfortunate. I, I There was ways I could have um, defended it. But because you, I didn't know it. Yes. How to deal with copyright. Yes. Uh, and so when these guys, they will bully you on it. They just hit you. Yeah. If you don't know it, you're out of here. Mm. And so I had to actually learn. The hard way. Yeah. That and channel was already big by that time. Yeah. By that time, it was at 17,000. I mean, like wow. the Dead Man Rising thing had gained me like 6,000. Thing. Wow. And the funny thing about the Dead Man Rising was a video I was not going to make. But there was this lady, uh, Pelo, a Pelo, she stays in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. I still remember like yesterday. She would not let me rest. Until you do it. Yeah. So I Sunday. Think, I think I want to thank her. <laughs> because that brought. Thank you so much, <laughs> Pelo, right? Pelo. <laughs> Pelo, thank you. Pelo because guys. of that, I was able to find this man. <laughs> And so she sent me like four or five messages. Wow. In a space of two days. Like, Ricky, have you seen the story? Have you seen this thing that because happened? It was your video that where I created the script. If you remember well, yeah, if yeah. you go back now, yeah. it was you who gave me the baseline of what is involved here. And so the briefing and all the scripts for the program were was, that's why you could not I could not leave you out. Because it was, yeah, I remember you mentioning it. Exactly. Mm. And so you come on stage, you meet one of your big mentors. <laughs> the guy you had been following for the Forerunner Chronicles. <laughs> Forerunner yes. Chronicles, yeah. Christopher Hudson. That was something else, man. That was something. It was like, oh, this for guy. Me, for, me, was, it, for me, it was a pleasant surprise, actually. I didn't know you knew him. I knew him, like, because it was some of his points. Actually, Christopher's videos were with some of the foundations of the videos I used to make Is that to evangelize. So? Yes. Wow. It, that was such a huge... Input into <laughs> your stuff. Yeah. Uh, most of the... I used to make smaller clips. I would take, oh, he says this, he says this. Uh -huh. Maybe breaks down a video or something. Somebody did yeah. something. Yeah. I would take that. And that's what I would present to the kids. Oh, you guys oh, are listening wow. to this song. This is what, 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 what. That's how I started. And, and then from nowhere, you just bump in and he's on the stage with he's you. He's on the same stage with me. <laughs> I was like, hey. Yeah, that, was a, that was a pleasant hookup from heaven. Yeah, no, yeah. that, that was, that was quite a thing. Because he was linked up to us for that particular episode through our brother, Uloaho, mm. from Pew Light yeah. in Kumalanga. They were doing something with him in Joburg. Mm. So he says, ah, he's tired. And I said, no, please bring him if you can. Mm. Little did I know it was for you. <laughs> <laughs> bring, so that I can have that picture. The moment. <laughs> if you actually check on my Facebook profile, which is uh -huh. deactivated at the moment. All right. Uh, his the picture where I'm sitting with him, uh -huh. he, it's right at the top. Wow. And wow. our picture where we took on yes, the stage. Yes, all of us, yeah. It's, it's right up there. It's my, it's my thing. Why did you just, just deactivate your Facebook? You're you a are social media mogul now. They were sending me funny, weird friend oh. requests. And so... I need to stop that algorithm from doing that. From doing it yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's those very weird gangsterish kind of people that it was starting to send me. So I like that. Deactivate. They are on you because of yeah. the work you're doing. Yeah. So you lose the channel, but you bounce back much even stronger. Yeah. Church reality now. Mm. I watch those videos, by the way. Mm. <laughs> I may not comment always, but I do watch and I, yeah. I think I'm part of the likes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about this that you're doing now. So God has moved you You've, he has founded you in the Bible. Now he has given you a calling to really help the church stabilize in terms of doctrine. Mm. Because we are a faith that is founded mm. on the Bible as mm. Christians. Mm. So what is the vision around this and how is it going? We see the numbers, mm. but we don't know behind there how it is going. How far? Mm. The, like I said, mm -hmm. My goal, when I when I realized that for me, when, it, when trying to grasp education was not working, and I saw what the Bible was like, I was like, okay, I need to find something that's going to sustain me as I do this. All right. So I didn't think, oh, I need to go to Bible make college money. or seminar. Uh? No, I need to make money doing the content. Oh, okay. I didn't think, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking something to fund me doing this. All right. So 
because I was uploading those videos when those kids were leaving school because they're leaving metric. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were like, okay, so how do we get a hold of the content? Mm. Like, I don't worry. I'll upload it online. All right. So when I uploaded it online, I was uploading for them. Okay. I didn't know there was an algorithm behind YouTube. And then before you know it, I had a video with 200,000. I'm like, what ha- What just happened here? Wow. And who, are so, this, who are these people? Who are these people? Yeah. It was a video I had made about house music, something, something. Yeah. And this video made me realize, oh, I can reach more people online. So it was, a, it was I just stumbled into it. I didn't uh-huh. intend. Uh-huh. Like nowadays, people intend on going to YouTube. And to make to, money. To make money. <laughs> no. I, and actually, I never even saw money. That was 2010. Okay. Wow. So the evangelism was 2010. Yeah. So I see the video shut off like 2011. Uh, uh-huh. I'm like, what? So there's a lot more people to reach online. Wow. And from 2011 all the way until 2019, I'd never seen a check from Facebook, from YouTube. So when Pierre Lord made that recommendation about mm-hmm. Dead Man Rising, yeah. that was the first time. Wow. I was like, oh, if I'm on time. I could actually tap into the I energy. I could tap into the, the, to the energy. The hype for this thing. Yeah, because that was a that was a whole thing. That was like, I could teach a course on what happened with yeah. my Alf Lukau video. Yes. She sent me the story Sunday. Yeah. I start seeing it on Tuesday. I'm like, ah, Monday, Tuesday. And I make the video research yeah. overnight. Yeah. In the morning, the video is up. It starts trending on Twitter the next day, the same day. Oh, wow. So my ta- my my upload literally met up with the Twitter thing wow. and people went on YouTube to, to look, look for now. the full video. Wow. And because the full video was cut up into like 17 minutes worth of the video, my video was 25 minutes and people were watching oh, half of right. that. And so YouTube said retention is good, this video is getting the clicks, push. We're sending it out. And then that was the first day. Then you had Queens and Thingy respond yes. by by Thursday. When they responded that's on Thursday, another that's another wave. Uh, by Friday, you have um, Trevor Noah reacting to it. But this time, you, Trevor Noah is in the US. Yeah. When Trevor it's spoke about course. it, yeah. it went international. The video went from 300,000 views mm. to 750. Wow. And so I, that's when I saw, oh, okay. This thing. We have to be on time. As this long as thing. we are on time. <laughs> we catch them. And so that's how far is it going? That's how far. We wow. Are. It's, we, I, I've, I realized that the people were online now. And even people that are not willing to listen to you in person. They will listen. They will listen online. And they that's can put you point. on watch later. That's a good point. So that's where we are. And so it's a blessing to see you make so-called Christian teachers, preachers, bishops account yeah. for what they teach. Mm. But it comes at a, with a burden. Every blessing comes with a burden. I yeah. want to say that. Yeah. What's the biggest burden you're carrying with this thing? And what's the, what's the vision going forward? Another thing that people might not even realize. Mm. Uh, this puts you at odds with family or friends or whoever perceives themselves close to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember one day. So I'm, must I be careful now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I might find my video being reviewed. <laughs> Check this guy. <laughs> so there was there was a day I remember like a few weeks, months back, uh-huh. a few months back, a family member, distant, distant family member mm-hmm. from my dad's side. Mm-hmm. They they stumble on my ZCC videos. They are ZCC. Oh, they're angry. Sending me messages. Oh wow! So I'm like, hi, how are you? <laughs> you know, when a person is angry, <laughs> you must be soft. Hi, how are you? Yes, you know this thing. I'm like, hey, hey, do not ever call me about my work. Oh wow! So, and so I just had to tell her, just you, you want us to talk further? Don't interrupt with my work. Oh wow! Just keep it there. And so she, she was so pissed off. Uh, she didn't say nothing. Later on, she yeah. came back. I think she saw another video because I hammer this. Once I get on Jesus's neck, uh, <laughs> but it's not just about hammering. It's about exposing certain yeah miss what do I, what do I call it errors yeah all right or even if it's not errors, let's just assume it's differences in understanding yeah. So even if it was not errors. Uh, you have a right to say what you believe this scripture is saying. And let yeah. me say what I think it says. And let's allow the spirit to lead. 
So if we then say no one must speak, then there's a challenge. There's a problem. No, there's a problem. It's a we problem. You are now pontificating. Yeah. Speaking ex cathedra. I'm into theology now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the <laughs> to term. To say when the Pope speaks. No questions. But that's not what our faith says. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets you to, this is quite amazing. Actually, I didn't realize it could be that bad. Yeah, they, they called it, they were pissed off. I was like, hey, I told them off. I said, if you want well, let me tell you. Um, shout out to my moms. My moms is the most supportive person I've ever seen. Even wow. when I was doing nonsense, my mom <laughs> would just be like, so you're going to dedicate to doing this? <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're sure. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And so, and it's, and uh, if you listen to my early videos, yeah. you'd hear my mom laughing in the background because okay. she would be cooking. Okay. So I would shoot. I'm not one of those. What's up, guys? <laughs> because then the family is in the back. In the, in the yeah, back. You're, you're, you're just shouting. No, 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 no. I would be shouting when my mom is there. So uh, my bravery to answering the other ones was mm. coming from that. You say, mm. my mom approves my thing. And yeah. I, I've, I've had girlfriends leave. Mm. Yeah. Because I remember one, she wow. wanted to, she was like, I can't even put an input. And I'm like, what input? Oh, wow. You didn't have the, you don't have the push to correct someone. What yeah. you want, no, but Ricky, you are good at teaching. Just, just teach. I say, no. It's I not the direction. To. I have to call out the wow. wrong. The issue is not the teaching. It's wow. the wrong. You're not addressing the wrong. And so she got pissed off. You're like, you go. Yeah, so uh, it does affect all these other areas. And so, but also, what does the Bible say? It says, uh, who uh, brought a sport? Build. Yeah, to cut in. In between, to yeah. divide. And who builds without yeah. counting the cost? Mm. That verse is actually a verse about discipleship. Other yeah. people think it's talking, oh, yeah, yeah building. No, no, it's discipleship. You what are you going to lose? Exactly. What are you prepared to lose out on? Yeah, yeah. Now, I know you could actually be creating more enemies because some of the people you're targeting, mm. I would believe the Bible says they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm. They are in it not for the gospel, but they are in it for the money. Mm. And sometimes even for the fame mm. of just saying, I am the biggest. And so when you call them out, you are chipping away at their ego. Mm. Some of them at their own bread. Mm. So that definitely creates a lot of those type types. Uh, we had another brother, Solomon. Mm. He was actually taken to the cleaners and had serious, I don't know if they're over now, his battles with the people he was calling out. Yeah. Have you had any of those types? Yeah, but it's a bit different with my the ones that come to me. Because mm -hmm. Solomon sometimes deals with laundries. I deal with doctrine. All right. Uh, the thing that I've noticed with charlatans, they don't care about doctrine. Okay. Yeah, so that's another thing that people might not mm. be. Uh, they don't care about doctrine. So that's why they can, ah, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, this stupid. Yeah, <laughs> little boy. Yeah, and so that's the first thing. And also, I don't do breaking information, breaking, breaking news, news and all of this thing. Girlfriend of, uh, I don't do those kind of stories because those you kind just, of stories yeah. are the ones that get you uh -huh. in trouble. With See people. Yeah. yeah. And so I will talk if about... If they are to sue you, they are suing the Bible in this case. Yeah. And so <laughs> you, you will have to explain to me scripturally... Yes. Yeah. Why you, are, why you are contesting what I'm saying. Yeah. Because right. I asked you about the Bible. So me, I stick to the doctrine. I stick yeah. to the teaching. And I stick to the to the viewpoint on... Yes. What does the Bible say about your, your role as a leader? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want us to bring this to a close. And... Uh, uh, let me say, I, I definitely watch your channel. I think I've subscribed to it. Mm. I do follow it. If you haven't, I'm going to put the link to Ricky's um, uh, channel. If you want fresh, open discussions, open reviews of some of the Christian uh, or not so Christian practices and mm. teachings out there, he does offer a perspective, which I think is a very uh, fresh, open mind. I want us to bring did, this to a close. Did, did, do you know... How how you know you're talking to a YouTuber? Uh -huh. I think I'm subscribed. Now, <laughs> only a YouTuber will understand that subscribing yes. is not really thinking. It's yeah. watching. Once you watch the video, you 
yes. watch all the way through yeah. youtube is just going to bring you back the newer episodes so exactly <laughs> exactly exactly so let's let's get to another fun time uh, i know these things you know you you didn't even have a chance to say them out i want you to answer honestly yeah openly mm. okay you can look into the camera straight or you can talk to me whichever the case might be mm. it's fine now what's your best food or best dish food, it's rice my love rice you can give me rice every single day i think 2021 i like ate only rice mm. there was a lady that used to cook rice from the, down from where my studio was mm-hmm. cooked it amazing unfortunately covid she oh. she she closed down yeah my best food rice what is your worst nightmare maybe of the past or the future what is the thing that really makes you feel it's a nightmare not being able to provide i think that's every man's uh thing mm. and so being able to provide you it gives you a bit of a back mind so you yes. you can look at everything properly yes yeah. yes yeah and if you were to write your first book i don't know if you've already published a book never I've what never. will be the title or what will be the subject and time doctrine that would okay. be this but i'll never write a book um i'm <laughs> <laughs> just putting it out there if you're a publisher not interested <laughs> i don't want to sell anything i want to make i want to try and make sure that everything is out there and up. if i can do it in a video we're just going to sit down and talk in a video <laughs> video <laughs> form but if it was to be a subject okay. so you're going to make time. a sub you should you're going to create videos then the videos will be i should have actually asked what would be the video <laughs> end time yeah end time doctor all right and um what is your greatest joy in life when you the person you see the person that gets pissed off mm-hmm. the person that's convinced they are right mm-hmm. the person that could not they would never think you in the right when they mm. finally come to you and they're like ah. you're right yeah and so every time when i see a person angry like when you are being angry in my comments i'm like <laughs> don't worry i see them yeah Sometimes. i got you in the prayer line you know, don't worry i got you i got you <laughs> yeah no, 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 this boy yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. I remember there's a guy by the name of Cliff. Uh-huh. He's in the comments. Uh, All right. He always comments, eh? And he was he was angry early days. Mm. Yeah. So he was a perfect example of it to All say right. um sometimes don't don't dismiss them. You know, uh-huh. just give them their time to fume. Yes. When they are done and feel heard. They'll come back. Mm. 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 Now if you look back in your life I would have asked what is your biggest regret. Yeah. You might not have one but maybe I could say what is the thing you could do differently if you given a chance. It could be a regret, it could be something you wish oh if I had another chance I would do it differently. Oh I think um it would be if all my ideas around what I wanted to execute on mm-hmm. YouTube mm-hmm. if I had done them earlier. Earlier? Yeah. Wow. Because if I had, if I had focused more I mean like my first YouTube channel was 2010 guys. That was already like when you were <laughs> yeah. post-metric afterwards. Yeah. So start early. Yeah, so that period, you know, if I had learned then, I mean like by 2000 when I lost my first uh channel mm-hmm. 2012, it had 3000 subscribers. Wow. When I lost my second channel it was at 4000 subscribers that was 2014. Wow. And by that time there was the BBC was doing a documentary which I was advising on. Wow. And so that's when I realized man the influence is massive here. Okay. So if there was anything all the ideas that I had back then yeah. it was execute to the last Early. Point. Yeah. You know yesterday I watched a video of my niece, my sister's child. Mm. When I enrolled at university 1996, she was not even born. And yet when I was a first year student it never crossed my mind that i could do a youtube channel there was not even youtube then <laughs> so i'm watching this first year student in media multimedia at university she's she's presenting this thing mm. she's interviewing people and i'm like 20 <laughs> 26 years ago i would have never done this, yeah, done this yeah. these kids are on another level mm. so i actually the, the same thought came to me to say you know what 
we came in late in this thing. Yeah. So maybe the message for YouTubers out there, African kids, execute. is execute right now. Execute, Don't and wait. you learn. You learn better. Like I, I see people turning YouTube into a competition and whatnot, and I'm like, I feel sorry for that, because you you can't grow if you think thinking of competition. Yeah. You grow yeah. when you see opportunity and a space for me to grow. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get better in graphics. Yes. Now. I'm trying to grow yes. in how better to, to to lay out and mm. to have it consistent yes. to a point where you watch epi three episodes in the same day. This episode looks different. This episode looks different. This, and you're like, when does he get the time to go from the set to this? Mm. And I want it to be that deep in production mm. value. And so, right. but you need to get used to that yeah. level of thing. Yeah. Mm. Great. I want you to look straight in that camera of yours. Mm and talk to your fans. I know they're all listening. They're all watching. So <laughs> I want you to tell them something. Either it's to subscribe to Melvin Broadcasting or whatever. <laughs> Look straight there and talk to them. What's up, guys? It's the Reality Joe, the Daily Christian Commentary video. As we always say, hope you guys had a wonderful time. And uh, do subscribe to Mel V. There's a lot of content that comes out on this channel. And let's keep looking forward to the day when our Lord comes back to get us. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Awesome stuff. <laughs> I like that. I like that stuff. No teacher could teach you that. <laughs> only no, God no, no. can give it to you. You only get Thank it you. when you're out there in the field. Thank you so much, my brother, and God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, guys, and all the best. Please do subscribe. Do follow Melvi Broadcasting Network. This was Melvi Podcast on the go with your producer and presenter, Melusin Jalambe. God bless you.